Blender 4.3 has just been released with a barrage of new and exciting features, most of them for Grease Pencil and GeoNotes. The UI got some cool new updates that really make sense. We have a new noise texture and there's also some cool features about rendering like a new volumetric system. There is now a diffuse roughness slider in the principal BSDF and a brand new metallic BSDF that allows for physically very accurate representation of real metals which was previously only possible with custom OSL scripts. And as exciting as this is, there might be a situation where you might want to hold off on using it and where it could have a negative effect. Let's talk about it. So this is the new metallic BSDF that we find in 4.3. It comes with two methods. The first one would be the F82 tint method, which is pretty much the same algorithm that we already have in the principal BSDF without all the clutter that it comes with. So in the principal BSDF, if we set the metallic value to one, the reflectivity of the material gets set to 100% and then it gets multiplied by the base color to get the final reflectivity and hue of the metal that we want to represent. Here in the metallic BSDF, the main difference that you'll notice is that the base color of the material is not a pure white anymore. It has a slight tint to it, which is more accurate for metals. And that we have the edge tint here, which is pretty much the same as the specular tint in the principal BSDF. And then we can adjust our roughness and isotropy and the rotation of it and all. Now the second method is where it gets interesting and that's called the physical conductor mode. Now the physical conductor mode uses a complex index of refraction which combines an IOR for the reflection of the material and an extinction for the light absorption of the material all on an R, G and B level. Now to get those values, we need to go to a website where we can enter the wavelengths for red, green and blue. And this will give us the corresponding values for the IOR and the extinction. Now this only works in cycles. In EV you can still set it up, but it will then be converted back to the F82 tint method under the hood. So that's the gist in a nutshell. For a way more detailed and technical explanation, I highly recommend you check out Chris Tyler's video on his channel, Christopher 3D. He's got a whole video on that and he explains it so much better than I ever could. He's done all the research. So I'll put a link into the description to his video. Make sure you give that a watch. So let's have a gander at this new method and make a copper material. So I'm gonna get rid of the principal BSDF and add a shift a shader metallic BSDF. Plug that in and switch it over to physical conductor. And now we need the values for the IOR and extinction. And for that, we have to go to a website called refractiveindex.info. And there we can go to 3D selected data for 3D artists. And on the metals, we can look for copper. Now here we can enter the wavelengths for the RG and B channels. And I got those wavelengths from Chris Tyler's video. He's done all the research on it, so I'm just gonna use those values. So let's start with the red channel, which is 0.615. And that gives us the IOR and the extinction level for that channel. So let's type that in here. The uh, red channel would be 0.3552, and the extinction would be 3.2521. And you can already see how the metal changes while you were doing this. I'm just gonna close this here. So next up is the green channel, which is 0.55. And then we can type these in here, 0.67693 and 2.6248. And lastly, for the blue channel, which is 0.45, we have 1.3164 and the extinction is 2.2. 2921. So just like that, once we enter those values, we have a very physically accurate representation of a copper material and we can adjust the, the roughness to our liking however we want it. Now that's great, but it's also a tedious process. So I recommend to do this once and then save the material, right click on it and mark it as an asset, save your file somewhere, and then you can just go to your asset browser and just drag and drop them in every time you need them. For example, this would be the lead material. So it's an awesome feature for any project that requires a high level of realism, whether that's ArcVis or some technical art, or for example, if you're designing jewelry in Blender, then you just got a big boost.
But as much as I love this, because I'm a sucker for accuracy and realism, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, you may want to hold off on using the shader in some circumstances for a couple of reasons. So here's a buyer's beware, so to speak. Now, for most people, this won't matter at all. You upgrade to 4.3 and keep working with that and anything that comes after. The problem is that it's not backwards compatible. If you've applied it to an object and you open that file in an older version of Blender, you end up with a red shader node and a black object. It won't get converted to something else somehow or revert back to one of the old shaders, like for example, the new volu volumetrics, just revert back to the old one. And of course I get it, it's a completely new shader that didn't exist before, so why would it? Well, it wouldn't. But that's where I see an issue and why I wonder a bit about the timing of this release. Let me explain what I mean. There are mainly two reasons. The first is if you are someone who creates and sells assets or freelances for bigger studios here and there, shares blend files, whatever it is, if you make something or work on something that others get access to, they either need to have 4.3 and up or they will end up with a broken material and will have to fix that. So you might end up losing out on a big customer pool or potentially make people unhappy because they use older versions of Blender. I guess you'd have to ship the asset with backup material then and tell people to switch around if need be, uh, or because you never know which version of Blender people use. Now the LTS versions of Blender play a big factor in this, in my opinion, because they tend to be used a lot longer than the versions in between. And the second reason goes sort of hand in hand with the first. This one being that studios and professionals often work with an LTS version or a custom version of some LTS because of the stability. They often only change versions once a new LTS is released and then they switch everyone over and then likely stay there until the next one comes around. Even a lot of regular users do it in a similar fashion just because they value the stable version over the newest feature at all times or even stick to older versions due to system requirements. Now granted, especially studios might use OSL shaders already if they require this physical correct representation, but even then they would have to fix anything that is created with the new shader. The thing is that the latest LTS is 4.2, which was released, what, two and a half months ago? So considering how it went with 3.6, which was the last LTS, and even 3.3 before that, 4.2 is most likely going to stick around for maybe a year or so. So that means a big chunk of users will miss out on this new shader for quite some time, which in turn might have an effect on asset creators and the ability for working artists to use this shader depending on who they work with. So I'm thinking this shader should have been included in the 4.2 LTS release, or at the very least, if it wasn't ready yet, included in the latest update to 4.2. Although I don't know how feasible that would be because I don't know anything about coding. Like I said, as there's nothing negative about the shader itself, it's merely a sort of a heads up to consider the use case of this, depending on the situation. The shader itself is great and I love the accurate representation of the metals and I'll definitely use it in my projects, if I don't have to share them with anybody. So there it is, my bit of concern about an otherwise great release. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about the shader. Will you be using it? Am I overreacting? Maybe I'm just too picky or have the wrong idea about it. Please discuss. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy blending.